Get ready to transform your videos into cinematic wonders using Stable Diffusion and Deforum. In this tutorial, we'll guide you through the secrets of video styling, revealing two methods to add flair to your content. Today, we're uncovering the magic behind transforming your videos with Stable Diffusion and Deforum. Brace yourselves for two game-changing methods that'll elevate your content to new heights. To kickstart your video transformation journey, make sure you have Stable Diffusion, Deforum, and ControlNet installed. You can find tutorials for that in the description below. For ControlNet, we will try out three different models. For the first method, we will only use the Tile model. This is the faster way to style your videos, but it's less consistent. For the second method, we will need the Soft Edge and Temporal Net models. We will use these two models simultaneously in ControlNet. It's a bit slower, but it's very consistent, as you will see later in the video. Download these models from the Hugging Face website and put them in your ControlNet models folder. Before we move on to Deforum, we first need to do some quick testing in the Image to Image tab. You'll need an image or frame from the video you want to transform. This can be captured using software like Premiere Pro. Open your video in any software of your choice and export a frame. Alternatively, you can use the built-in snipping tool on Windows for quick screenshots. Place the image in the Image to Image tab and adjust the following settings. The most important setting is the checkpoint you want to use. This defines the style that your video will be rendered in. I will be using the Tune You checkpoint, but you can browse for any checkpoint you like on Civit AI. Next up, enter your prompt and negative prompt. I've also included the LCM LoRa at a value of 0.7. This is optional, but I highly recommend it because it makes the generation go way faster. To learn more about the LCM LoRa, I'll link a video in the corner right about now. Set the sampler to Euler A, use 8 sampling steps. For width and height, match these to your input image dimensions or opt for resizing by. Next, adjust the CFG scale within the range of 1 to 2 and set the denoising strength of 1. If you are not using the LCM LoRa, increase the sampling steps to at least 15 or more and the CFG scale to about 7. Now it's time to use ControlNet. Scroll down and open up your ControlNet tab and enable it. First off, set the control type to Tile slash Blur and the preprocessor to None. Make sure the right model is selected, the SD15 tile. If you don't see it, click the refresh icon here and make sure the file is located in the ControlNet models folder. Next up, increase the control weight to 1.5 to 1.8 and select ControlNet is more important. By fine-tuning these image-to-image -image settings, you lay the groundwork for optimal deform results. Now let's generate and see the result. That already looks really good for just using one control net unit. Now let's quickly explore a more consistent way before we head over to Deforum. You can leave all the settings the same except for control net. We will be using two control net units. Make sure to enable them both. For the first unit, we want to use some of the default options, so set the control type back to All, the preprocessor to None, and for the model, select the Temporal Net model. Slightly decrease the control weight to about 0.7 and set the control mode to Balanced. For the second control net unit, use the following settings. Set the control type to Soft Edge. Change the preprocessor to Soft Edge Head and make sure the Soft Edge model is selected. For the control weight, I suggest a value between 1.5 and 1.8. Lastly, set the control mode to Control Net is more important. Now let's generate and see the example. In this case, I like the first method better. This may vary per video, as I will show in later examples. This is why testing it first is a crucial step in this process. If you're satisfied with the results, we can move over to the Deforum tab. To make your life a little easier, I've made two settings files that you can download for free. I'll leave the links in the description. Simply download the files and put it in your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder. Copy the path of the file and paste it in the Deforum Settings file section, and click on Load All Settings. After successfully loading all the settings, there still are a few settings you need to change yourself. Let's run those down real quick. In the Run tab, you may need to change the width and height to match your video's aspect ratio. Here you also have the option to rename your output video under Batch Name. In the Keyframes tab, you have the option to change the cadence. If your video has a lot of movement, I suggest keeping this at 1. You can also play around with the Strength schedule. 
This is how much you want the previous frame to influence the next frame. For slower videos, I recommend increasing this a little bit as it can improve consistency by a lot. I'll show you an example of this later. You can ignore the max frames as this does not apply to this workflow. For even more consistency, you can select video input for the color coherence in the coherence sub tab. Also quick note, if you have an AMD or Intel GPU, you want to disable use depth warping in the depth warping and FOV sub tab. In the prompts tab, you need to change the prompts to match the one you used in testing. Make sure to include the LoRa and use the right formatting. For the init tab, we need to locate the video init sub tab and paste our video path here. Right click your video and press copy as path. On Windows 10, use shift and right click. Then paste the path and make sure to remove the double quotes. Set the control net settings to match the ones you used in testing. We don't need to input our video path here as it will copy over the same path used in the init tab. In the output tab, make sure that the FPS matches with the video you're using. To find the frames per second of your original video, navigate to its properties, select details, and locate the FPS information displayed next to frame rate. Additionally, you can select to keep the same audio as your original video under Add Soundtrack. Now you're ready to generate. That took less than 15 minutes, pretty quick for a 7 second video. Now click here to see the result. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful so far. That looks pretty good already. I've interpolated this video to 50 FPS. Let's see the difference. To really show the difference between the two methods, I have run this video through Deforum again with Temporal Net and Soft Edge enabled. The outcome was not as nice as the tile only video, but don't worry. I've got another example to show where the second method is obviously superior. There's still a tiny bit of glitching, that's due to the fast movement causing motion blur in the original video, but overall it's really consistent, just look at the fluid motion. Now let's watch a final comparison to help you decide what method you should choose, and if you want to try this out for yourself but don't have a good enough graphics card, check out Think Diffusion, a handy website that lets you run stable diffusion in the cloud. Sign up with the link in the description for a free trial, and on top of that you get a 20% bonus on your first deposit. That's a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Peace out.